Jesus. My hope is Jesus. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, trumpets only I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness, a righteous On Christ I will depend, my hope is Jesus. He me, and he will keep me till the end. The rock of my salvation, on Christ I will depend, my hope is Jesus. My hope is Jesus. Hey, it's Pastor Jerry Burns, the pastor here at Kitchener Baptist Church. Our live stream is going to begin in just a moment. But I wanted to come on and just to welcome you to our service. Whether you're a first-time visitor or whether you're a regular attender, it is truly an honor to have you join us today. Our prayer is that God would use this service to bless your heart. We're not here to entertain. We're here that the Spirit could use this service to draw you closer to our Savior. And so get rid of any distractions that may pull your attention away from our worship service and make sure your Bible is handy and let's worship the Lord together. God bless you. Again, thank you for joining us and let's begin our live stream today. Sinking s 
services this morning. We're so glad that you are joining us. We're going to begin by singing number 489, Glory to His Name. 489, if you're able to stand together, we'll sing on that first verse, 489. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the wonderful blessings that you've given to us. We're grateful for the time that we can come together this morning and to worship your wonderful name. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless us. I pray, Lord, you would help us to understand. And Lord, I pray you would help us to take steps forward in our Christian growth. May you be glorified in every aspect of our service. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, and let's find our hymn books once again, 209, Grace That Is Greater Than Our Sin, 209. Mount Hood Lord, there were the 
I surrender all. But before we hear the offertory, I'm just going to ask the Lord to bless the offerings this week in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, everything that we have, everything we receive, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. We thank you for your gifts. And Lord, we just pray this morning, you bless each gift and each giver and use what you have given to us and what we have given back for the furtherance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
special ladies, we're going to sing hymn number 340. Hymn number 340, Nearer, Still Nearer. so glad that you are joining us on this long weekend. I know there's lots of places that you could be, but we're glad uh, that you chose to worship with us here at Kitchener Baptist Church. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, next Saturday, May 28th, uh, we have planned a mother's and daughter's tea. That's at one o'clock here at our church. There is a sign-up sheet, ladies. Uh, we'd love for you to be a part of that. If you could sign up, uh, that would help us. Again, one o'clock, we'll be meeting whether
whether you're a mother or a daughter, we'd love for you uh, to be a part of uh, that uh, event. May 29th, during the evening service, Faithway Baptist College of Canada will be with us. They'll be providing special music, and so I hope that you'll join us uh, for that. For the month of July, we're going to change our scheduling service schedules just for the month of July. Uh, we're going to have our regular 1030 in the morning service, and then we're going to have uh, an afternoon service, 130. Our plan is to be outside if the weather permits. If not, we'll move it inside. And so 10.30 in the morning and then 1.30 in the afternoon, again, that is only for the month of July. All right, let's look at our victory verse for this month, Hebrews 13 and verse number 8. You can find it in your Bible or you can see it on the screen behind me. We'll say the reference together as a church and then let's say this wonderful scripture. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. I'm glad he never changes, amen. Let's sing together, the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. And the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go Amen. 204 in our hymn books together. If you're able, let's stand. We'll sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, 204.
shadows fall I know where it leadeth My father planned it all I sing through the shade and the sunshine I'll trust in whatever befall I sing for I cannot be silent My father planned it all He guides my faltering footsteps shade in the sunshine I'll trust in whatever befall I sing for I cannot be silent my father planned it all a day of light and gladness on which no shade will fall a death at last awaits me my father planned it all Sing through the shade and the sunshine I'll trust in whatever befall I sing for I cannot be silent My father planned it all My father planned it all Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much, young people, for that special this morning let's take our bibles together if we could and we'll find the book of isaiah and the 57th chapter if you turn there with me isaiah chapter 57 and we're going to begin our reading in verse number one you will have to excuse me this morning my allergies are not being kind to me it is tis the season i guess you could say uh, for those but um, we'll get through it with the Lord's help. Isaiah 57 and verse number 1. Let's begin our reading in this passage of Scripture. It says, The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace, and they shall rest in their beds each one walking in his uprightness. But I draw near hither, ye sons of the sorcer sorceress and seed of the adulterer and, and the whore. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy light. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a, a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither whence thou up to offer sacrifice. Behold, the doors also in the post hast thou set up thy remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me, and art gone up, thou hast enlarged thy bed, and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. And thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even into hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet say, sayest thou not, there is no hope, thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou was not grieved. For of whom hast thou been afraid or feared? And thou hast lied and hast not remembered me, nor laid it in thy heart. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? 
I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, and they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity, vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit thy holy mountain and shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take ye, uh, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth, for the spirit shall fail before, shall fail before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth and smote him. I hid me and was wroth and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him to his mourners. I create the fruit of, of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is afar off and to him that is near, saith the Lord. And I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be a part of uh, this assembly. And Lord, we thank you for your word and its power to change our lives. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts through your message as we understand through your word that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I pray, Lord, that you would help us to grow our faith and trust in you in these days. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to the 57th chapter, we once again are brought to a familiar subject. And that is the subject of spiritual idolatry. You see, Judah was guilty of committing spiritual adultery against God. They had turned to false gods, other gods, powerless gods. And God is calling them out in the direction of their human heart. You see, Judah had become passionate about these other gods, these false gods. In fact, we could say this morning, these terrible gods. In verse number 5 of our text, it speaks of the death of their children in the name of the false god Molech. And when they would take their child, their infant child, and they would place it upon the, the, the hands of Moloch, this false god made of metal, they would heat that god up until it was red, uh, red, a uh, hot red, and they would place their child on those hands and those cries those screams, they would say, would, would appease this false god, Molech. And so many in our world today, unfortunately, has offered up their children to the god of pleasure. The god of pleasure. And the Bible says in this passage of Scripture that they had sacrificed, they had given their children to this false god. Everything that should have been given to the Lord, was given to these false gods. In verse number 6 of our text, it says, Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these, God says? All the things that are worthy of me, you've given them away to these false gods. In verse number 10, it says that they were unfulfilled with these false gods. It says that they were wearied in the greatness of thy way. That these gods could not help them. These gods could not direct them. These gods could not guide them. And yet, why were they following these gods? Why would they, why would they turn to a god who had no power, no strength, no healing? 
Well, the answer is simple. God says the reason why you've done this is because you have a low view of me. You know, I think we talk a lot about revival in our world today and in our church. But I'm convinced in my heart that if we need revival in anything, we need a revival in our perception of who God is and who God is. You see, the Bible says they feared God. They did not fear God. They feared me not. They, they did not trust in Him. In Isaiah 57 and verse 13, God says these idols could not help you. You turn to these, these gods, but these gods are not your answer. He says even the wind would blow them away. They have no ability to make a difference in your life. And yet God had a highway for His people. God had a purpose for their life and a plan for their life, but they would not trust in Him. They would not turn to Him. And so in Isaiah 57 and verse 15, we come to a very familiar passage of Scripture. As Isaiah writes in this wonderful verse, he, he really brings it to a climax. What is the answer? What, what, what is the solution to this idolatry? He says in verse 15, For thou hast, hast saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Listen, if we're going to be right with God today, if we're going to be right with God today, then we're going to have to understand who he is. We're going to have to understand who he is. And we're going to have to humble ourselves before the majesty and the power of Almighty God. And friend, Isaiah understood that. Isaiah understood he had to bow a knee before the great God of heaven. I want us to turn back to Isaiah chapter 6. We looked at this passage many, many months ago now. Isaiah chapter 6 in verse number 1. Would you notice what the Bible says in verse number 1, Isaiah chapter 6? It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the posts of the doors moved at the voice of Him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, and he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Notice the Godhead there. Then said I, here am I, send me. You know, when we see the Lord high, holy, and lifted up, our natural response is a contrite heart. Our natural response is to humble ourselves. The atheist would say, well, if there's a God and and when I die and I stand before God, I will give him a piece of my mind. Friend, when you stand before God, you will fall to the ground as dead. At the presence and the majesty of Almighty God. And Isaiah saw the Lord high, holy, and lifted up. Isaiah, of course, began prophesying when King Uzziah died. And yet he had a vision of another king. He had a vision of a greater king. He says, I saw the Lord. And the angels surrounded the throne proclaiming, Holy, holy, 
holy is the Lord of hosts. You see, the Lord in His holiness is transcendent. He exceeds all limits of purity and majesty. When we speak of the transcendency of God, we're talking about the sense in which God is above us and beyond us. And that is what Isaiah is talking about in chapter 57. He says, listen, most of your sin problem is because you have a low view of God. Your problem in your life is because you don't see God high, holy, and lifted up. And Isaiah understood the majesty of God. Without a doubt, he was convinced of God's holiness. And God help us today to understand that our God is a holy God. If I could be honest with you this morning, I think it's it's important for a a pastor, a preacher to be honest. (laughs) Most churches in our world today, the idea of God being holy, it's a foreign term for them. I mean, in this day today with so-called Christian rock and roll, in our day today where Christian comedians take you know, cross the line in, the, in respect to, in reverence to Almighty God, many Christians don't truly understand the very personality of God being a holy God. I, I just believe today if churches understood that our God is a holy God, most of the foolishness that's happening in churches would be done away with. And though this building here this morning is just made of concrete and wood, and uh, more concrete than wood, actually. (laughs) If there's ever a tornado, listen, go to Kitchener Baptist Church. This place is solid, all right? It is solid. (laughs) We'll have a worship service during a tornado, amen? We'll pray and we'll stay. There you go. Pray and stay. (laughs) You know, this is God's house. This was built by the sacrifice of God's people. It is a place where we we leave all of the concerns of the world. We leave all of the the mess that's in our world. We're not going to bring that mess into the house of God. We come here to worship the Lord, and this is a reflection of who God is in our life. He's a holy God. Someone said, one day I looked at myself, at the self that Christ can see. And I saw the person I am today and the one I ought to be. I saw how little I really pray and how little I really do. I saw the influence of my life, how little of it was true. I saw the bundle of faults and fears I sought to lay on the shelf. I'd given a little bit to God, but I hadn't given myself. I came from seeing myself with my mind made up to be. The sort of person that Christ can see with a heart he may always see. The person that God uses today is the person that understands the holiness of Almighty God. That he is holy. I want us to notice if we could, number one, his works are holy. His works are holy. The Bible says in Psalm 145, verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all of his works. Our standard of righteousness falters at the best of time, but God's work is holy. And God's standard of holy, uh, holiness never needs restoration. God's standard of holiness never needs repair. I was just talking to someone this week about the work of God, and they made the statement, God's way is perfect. God never makes mistakes. And that is so true today. Our God is a perfect God. And we see his holiness in his works, first of all, in his creative works. He created this earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. A good God only creates that which is good. And yet we understand as Bible students this morning that sin had marred God's creation. God has created us in his image, and yet that image doesn't shine as it did 
through creation because of sin. Sin has clouded the very image of Almighty God. And yet God's creation, the Bible says, was very good. God's work was perfect in every way. But we see not only His creative work in the earth, but also in mankind. Would you turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 29? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 29. And notice what the Bible says here, verse 29, Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. It says this, verse 29, Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. You see, God's creation was holy, but man's choices were unholy. What a wonderful blessing that we had to be able to go out yesterday and, and uh, do distribution in the community. We had a great crowd of people, and I do appreciate your love for the gospel and your sacrifice for the gospel's sake. And, and we passed out lots of invitations, gospel invitations through it. I got done around 11.30 or so and came home and had some lunch and checked my email, and there was an email from an individual that received one of those gospel tracts, one of those invitations. And in that invitation, this individual said that he was not a believer in God, he was an atheist, and he made this statement, he said, and even if I was to believe in a God, it wouldn't be the God of the Old and New Testament. He said, because this God allows hurt and murder and allows heartache to happen in our world. Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm really excited Monday morning to be able to write him back, but I want to give to you uh, an explanation of that. When God created our world, there was no murder and hurt and all of those things. God created all things good. But you see, sin entered into the picture. And because sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And because of that, we have death in our world. We have heartache in our world. We have hard times in our world. We have tornadoes and earthquakes. And, and we, have, we have mass murders. And all of those things are not created by God. They are created in the intentions and the inventions of the human heart. Because sin has entered into the world. And the Bible says in this passage of Scripture that God created man upright. But they chose to disobey God. They chose to go their own way. We see God is holy in his creative work, but God is also holy in his redemptive work. The Bible says in Psalm 22, let's turn there if we could, and notice what the psalmist had to say. Psalm 22 and verse number 1. We'll begin our reading. Psalm 22 and verse number 1. Because of man's unholy choices, because sin entered into the world, God unfolded a holy, redemptive plan. We notice in Psalm 22, verse 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season I am not silent. Look what the Bible says in verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. The psalmist describes the darkest day in the history of the world. And that was the day the father turned his face from the Son of God. Why? Why? Well, the Bible says because God is holy. God is a holy God. When Jesus died, who knew no sin, the Bible says that he became our sin. Think about that for just a moment. All of our sin was placed upon the perfect Son of God. And the greatest agony of the cross was not the beating. It was not the nails. It was the fact of a God who knew no sin became our sin so that we could place upon ourselves his very righteousness. 
and be approved by God. This is the greatest miracle of God. We read the Bible, we read about wonderful miracles, how, how God you know, healed blinded eyes, how God made the lame to walk again. But friend, listen to me. If you're a Christian, you are the greatest miracle. You were separated from God. You were on, a, on your way to a devil's hell. And yet God reached down and saved your soul. The greatest miracle that God ever did was to save a sinner like me and like you. This is God's work. And friend, today, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you can have hope today. You can know Christ and you can have a home in heaven. The Bible says to believe the gospel. The gospel is the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. To believe that your sin has separated you from God. And yes, you are a sinner. And that sin has separated you from God and one day it will throw you into a devil's hell, and yet your sin does not have to put you in hell because Jesus died for that sin. And if you trust in him, he'll save you today. He'll wash your sins away. And you can have a home in heaven for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can call out to his name today. Lord, save me. And he'll hear that prayer and he'll save you today. His works are holy, his creative work, his redemptive work. But notice, if we could, number two, his word is holy. His word is holy. His word manifests his purity. Psalm 19, verse 8 says, The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. And righteous all together. God's word is light. And God is light. God's word is light. And God is light. God's word is pure. God is pure. God's word is true. Because God is true. And God's word is holy. Because God is holy. We see also his word magnifies him personally. In Psalm chapter 89, verse 7, it says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. You know, listen, one of the reasons why Christians today are so tolerant of sin and rebellion is because, let's be honest, we just don't have reverence for God. There's a lot of things in my life that I didn't do as a teenager because I'll be honest with you, I was terrified of my father. (laughs) And the reality is we live our life our way. We do our own thing and we, we refuse to trust God because we don't have reverence for God. God is to be feared greatly in the assembly of the saints. The word there, fear, is to have reverence to him. And we've gathered together in the name of the Lord. And our motive here this morning is to meet with God. And I believe with all my heart that He is with us this morning. He is present here this morning. He's listening to this sermon. I I hope that He is pleased with it. He he knows our attitudes. He knows what you're thinking this morning. When is this guy going to be done? Man, He just keeps going and going and going. (laughs) He knows everything. And He's present here this morning. We're in the presence of Almighty God. We're in the presence of a holy God. Psalm 99 verse 5, Exalt ye the Lord our God and worship at His footstool, for He is holy. He's holy. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, This then is the message which we've heard of Him. We've heard of God and declare unto you, That in him God is light and in him is no darkness at all. His works are holy. His word is holy. But lastly, as we close the message this morning, think about this. His will for us is holy. His will for your life today is a holy will. His will is redeeming us. Isaiah 64 and verse number 6. Let's turn back there if we could. 
uh, Isaiah, or forward, I guess. Isaiah 64 in verse number 6. Notice what the Bible says, verse number 6. Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verse number 6. It says this, but we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness. Notice there, I think a lot of people get confused with that scripture. It doesn't, it doesn't say the bad things you do are filthy rags. It says all of the good things you do are filthy rags. All of the things that our world promotes as approved of God, all the things that we think, you know, the world thinks that if I do these things, I'll go to heaven. God says, when I look at these things, they're just filthy rags. They're the rags that you would use to cover a leprous man. You would cover his wounds. That's what, that's what Isaiah says. They're just filthy rags to a holy God. And I'll be honest with you, we look at various individuals and we'll say, yeah, he's a good person. But really what we're saying from the perspective of another sinner is he's a good sinner. He's a bad sinner, but he's a good sinner. But God looks at us and says, we're all sinners. We're all, we're all, all of our righteousness is filthy rags. The Bible says, and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquity like the wind have taken us away he's taken us away because of our uncleanness we cannot have a relationship with god because of our sin we are separated from almighty god and yet i'm glad this morning that that jesus came down from heaven and died on the cross and i'm glad that 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 christ humbled himself and shed his blood for our sin so that we can have a home in heaven. My soul was for sale, and the devil said, I'll take it. And yet, Jesus said, no, I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. And he shed his blood so that we can have a relationship with Almighty God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, actually, let's turn there. This is probably one of my favorite passages of Scripture in the whole Bible. It is just a wonderful scripture. Romans chapter 3 and verse 24. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Notice what the Bible says, verse 24. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God, verse 25, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation of through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. You see, the cross of Jesus Christ and His shed blood meant that God could remain a holy God. God could remain a just judge. And yet at the same time, not just let our sins pass, not just sweep it under the carpet and make it go away, but He could satisfy the righteous demand of a holy God and that He became our sin, and died for our sin. But not only do we notice His will in redeeming us, but notice His will in renewing us. In Romans chapter 12, in verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because it is written... The Bible says in 1 Peter 1.16, Be ye holy, for I am holy. God doesn't want us as His people to be conformed to the world. He wants us to be renewed in His image, transformed by the renewing of our mind, to think differently about who He is. And He wants to refine us in His perfect, good, and acceptable will. Listen, Judah had great allegiance to false gods. And they were passionate to these gods. 
sacrificing their own children to appease them. And yet God is saying, listen, these gods can't help you. These gods are not your answer. You you can't run to these gods for help. They cannot help you. But why would you act this way? God says, I know why. Because I'm a holy God. But you have a low view of who I am. You see, I am the high and lofty one. I am not the man upstairs. I am the Creator God. That by Him, all things consist. He is the Creator God that spoke this world into existence. Let there be light. There was light. The Creator God. He says, humble yourself. Have a contrite heart. And bow a knee to the great God of heaven. God, help us today to have that contrite heart. If we're walking away from the Lord, if we're struggling in our Christian life, it might just be we have a low view of God. And may we revive that perception of who God is in our heart today. May we see Him as the high and holy one. And may we bow a knee to the great God of heaven. Let's pray together. Lord, thank You so much for Your Word. And thank You for the opportunity that we have to be a part of your church and to hear your word and to grow and to submit ourselves under the authority of your word. And I pray, Lord, you would help us all to make decisions here this morning that we're going to bow a knee to you. We're going to follow you. Lord, I pray you would help us to make good decisions. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our hymn books together for our benediction. And we're going to turn together to 249, 249, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. If you're able, let's stand together. I'll lead you 249. If God is working in your heart, would you do business with him this, this morning? Would you ask God to help you? Would you bow a knee to him on that first? Just as I that second now. Just as I am waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot
thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, tonight, we're going to be meeting together at 6 o'clock. We're going to continue our marriage series, Are We There Yet? And we're going to be looking at togetherness and busyness and how it can drive us apart. I hope that you'll join us tonight uh, for our Bible message. God bless you. You are dismissed. Hey, it's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I want to ask you an important question. You know, I believe anytime you hear the Word of God, it brings us to a place of decision. You have to decide, are you going to listen to God or are you going to ignore what He has to say for our life? Now, the greatest decision that you could ever make is to know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible teaches us that we have all sinned against God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of us are separated from him. And because of that, one day we will die. The Bible says that after death will come the judgment. And we want to make sure that when we die, we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, salvation is not found in ourselves. It's not found in being good or it's not found in religion or a denomination or anything like that. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. God sent his son in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his son into this world so that you could have eternal life. If you believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died for you, would you call out to his name today? Would you ask him to save you? The Bible teaches us that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You could pray something like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve help but you died for me to give me eternal life. I believe your gospel. I believe your message. Save me, take my sins away. Now it's not about words and a prayer. It's about a belief in the heart. And if you truly believe the gospel and you called out to God for salvation, then the Bible says you are a Christian. We'd love to hear from you. You can go to kitchenerbaptist.org backslash decision fill out the easy form and send it to us so that we can send you resources to help you grow in your new found faith. Christian, and when we hear the word of God, we also have to decide. What is God speaking to you about today? Would you say yes to the Lord? Whether it's to forsake a sin, whether it's to follow him in baptism or church membership, or whatever God is doing in your life, would you nod your head and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it, I'll go, I'll follow. Would you say yes to the Lord today? That's the greatest thing in the Christian life that we could ever do. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. I hope that you'll join us next time here at Kitchener Baptist Church. It's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I want to ask you an important question. You know, I believe anytime you hear the word of God, it brings us to a place of decision. You have to decide, are you going to listen to God or are you going to ignore what he has to say for our life? Now, the greatest decision that you could ever make is to know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible teaches us that we have all sinned against God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of us are separated from him. And because of that, one day we will die. The Bible says that after death will come the judgment. And we want to make sure that when we die, we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, salvation is not found in ourselves. It's not found in being good or it's not found in religion or a denomination or anything like that. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. God sent his son 
In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son into this world so that you could have eternal life. If you believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died for you, would you call out to his name today? Would you ask him to save you? The Bible teaches us that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You could pray something like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell, but you died for me to give me eternal life. I believe your gospel. I believe your message. Save me, take my sins away. Now it's not about words and a prayer. It's about a belief in the heart. And if you truly believe the gospel and you called out to God for salvation, then the Bible says you are a Christian. We'd love to hear from you. You can go to kitchenerbaptist.org backslash decision. Fill out the easy form and send it to us so that we can send you resources to help you grow in your new found faith. Christian, and when we hear the word of God, we also have to decide. What is God speaking to you about today? Would you say yes to the Lord? Whether it's to forsake a sin, whether it's to follow him in baptism or church membership, or whatever God is doing in your life, would you nod your head and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I'll go, I'll follow. Would you say yes 